Welcome to another edition of How Do You Wire It? In this episode, we are going to be demonstrating how to wire a L8148 Aquastack controller with a couple of zone panel or zone dampers. So to begin with this, we need to first be able to wire in, again, our, our safeties, okay, our breaker, an emergency switch, firematic switch, and then our service switch. Okay, these are our basic safety switches that are commonly found in a lot of our residential light commercial applications. So out of that service switch, I have to go in a couple of different directions. In fact, there's actually three. There's three different areas that I need to bring 120 volts to. I need to bring 120 volts up to my Aquastat itself, my L1. I also need to power up my transformer over here. And I also need to send 120 volts down to my ignition module. So why don't we take care of that? Okay, so there's my, my three power wires. Okay, so let's take care of our neutrals. Okay, I'm just going to use blue just so that we can show the difference in uh, our wiring. Okay. Okay, let me bring back my neutral down here. As you can tell, this diagram may start getting a little bit complicated, especially with all the wires going all over the place, but we'll try to explain it as best as we possibly can to what's going on. Okay, I'm just going to bring it back there. Okay, so there is my 120 volt um, circuitry so far. I'm powering up my Aquastat, I'm powering up my transformer primary, and I'm also bringing my 120 volts down to my ignition module. So the next thing I want to take care of is I think I'm going to want to take care of my um, my therm my um, my circulator. Let's take care of my circulators first. Okay, so let's do my circulator. Circulator, I'm just going to go with just black. So L1 comes out. I'm going to feed my circulator coming down. That's going to take care of that. My circulator is now wired. Okay, now we're going to take care of our our burner circuit. Let's take care of the burner. Okay, remember, we are now dealing with a triple aquastat here, B1, B2, and B3. If I was to wire between B1 and B2, I would be wiring it for millivolts. I am not dealing with a millivolt circuit here. I'm dealing with a 24-volt circuit. So between B1 and B3 is my 24-volt circuit. So I'm going to take care of that now. Okay, out of my my B, I'm going to want to do a, a couple of things here. Well, I'm going to come down, and I'm going to go through this rollout switch first. Remember, a rollout switch is kind of important, and we're dealing with gas. In the event that that, that blower or that flame happens to roll back out at us, I want that boiler to shut off. So in order for me to do that, I have to go through my rollout switch first before I go into my ignition module because now that is my safety 
That's my safety to take out my module in the event of an unsafe situation. <clears throat> so out of my my TA, my TH, I'm going to go to my TR, and I'm going to just simply go back to my my B3. Okay, I'm just simply going to go back to my B3, just like that. So that circuit is now complete. Okay. One last thing that I'm going to take care of before I go anywhere else is I want to take care of this inducer motor. Why? Because it's just for me, it's just a simple way of making sure that I get everything that I need to get done, done. So out of my inducer motor, you'll see inducer L1 and neutral. I'm going to come out, I'm going to just power up my inducer motor with this. I'm going to come out. And I'm just going to come right back in. Okay, looks a little complicated now, don't it? But trust me, it's really not as bad as you think it is. Okay, so what's going on now? Well, I got my my um, my sensor and my igniter. Let's take care of those real quick. Okay, I'm going to use this pink for my igniter. I'm going to use I'm going to use this I'm going to use a dark dark green for my my sensor. Okay? And there's my sensor. Okay? That's basically it for now that I want to just take care of. All right. I don't want to do too much more with that. So I'm going to jump up to my my TT, my 24 volt secondary, and all of this happy, happy stuff that's going on over here. This is where it can kind of get a little hairy. So, remember, our thermostats and our zone valves are getting powered with 24 volts. That 24 volts is coming from a second transformer in the system. Okay, it's not coming from the transformer that is in our our aquastat. That's coming from somewhere else. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to take my thermostats and I'm going to power them up with my with my red wire, my R, right? And now we're going to focus on each one of these on an individual basis, okay? Now, remember, let's go back to how a Taco zone valve is wired. Let's go to how a Honeywell zone valve is wired. Remember, a Taco zone valve is wired with three wires, one, two, and three, okay? My terminal two on my Taco zone valve has got to go to two separate places, Okay, my terminal three has to go to a certain place. So let's take care of that take ozone valve first. So out of my thermostat, I am now going to power up my terminal one. Okay, so out of my terminal one, I am now powering up that heat motor, correct? Okay. Good. I'm glad that everybody is agreeing with me. What is going to happen now is I have to now take my terminal 2, and in order for me to complete that circuit, I need to now send it back to my common on my uh, transformer. Okay, so I'm going to go and do just that. I'm going to send my power out. And I'm going to now send it to my common. Okay, because now there is that one circuit right there. My thermostat to terminal one through my motor and then back, right? Source, path, switch, load, right there. Okay, so now that that's complete, I have to send that. Remember, I got to send it to two separate places. 
Okay, I've sent it back to my common on my transformer, but I also have to send it up. Oh, you guessed it. I got to send it all the way up to one of my T's on my Aquastat. Okay, my other, my last terminal on my take ozone valve is going to go to my other T on my Aquastat. Just like that. Okay, so as this thermostat calls for heat, I am now going to power up my terminal one, which now is going to energize my motor. Okay, that motor is now going to start to heat up and melt that wax that is in there. And as that wax melts, my end switch will now close. So now between terminals two and three, I have now made a circuit. Which will now tell my Aquastat that I have a call for heat. The Aquastat will now send that signal down to the ignition module to send the call to my burners so that I can start delivering heat. Okay, but before we get to that part, let's take a look at the next two. Okay, we don't have a Takeo, we have Honeywell now. Honeywells are four wires. I'm going to have two wires that are going to go to my motor. I'm going to have two wires that go to my end switch. So how do I do that? Well, let's take it again. Let's take it step by step. So we are going to now take, and I'm just going to use a different color red here. I'm going to power up my motor. Okay, we're going to do this guy right here. Okay, so out of my transformer I have already powered up my my thermostat out of my thermostat I am now going to energize my motor out of my motor I'm just going to simply send it right back to my transformer I'm just going to complete the circuit. Source, pass, switch, load. The motor is my load. I'm just sending it right back to the transformer. My end switches, I'm just going to just simply bring right up to my, um, I'm going to use a hot green on this guy. I'm just going to simply bring it right up to my T's. Because okay, remember, the end switches are nothing more than an end switch. It's a proving switch. The end switch is what communicates with your, your Aquastat. And the same thing is going to apply to my last uh, zone valve here. <clears throat> I'm going to use, I'm going to come out of my thermostat. I'm going to power up my my motor okay out of my motor I'm going to use a different color here we go a different color with this guy out of my motor I'm just going to go right back to my transformer and then for my end switches I am now just going to take them and I'm just going to send them right up to my TT. That's my end switch. A little crazy up there now, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so in, in, in actual life, in real life, if you have multiple zone valve. Just, you're, you're going to see a couple of wires sticking out of that TT. Those are your end switches. The last thing that we really have to take care of in this is obviously the gas valve. We haven't taken care of that yet. I have a gas valve and a pressure switch. 
So what am I supposed to do with this stuff? Well, we got to look at it from a standpoint that a pressure switch is nothing more than a safety, right? That pressure switch is going to be used to prove whether or not that vent blower has actually started to spin and that the combustion chamber itself is actually clear of any non-combustible gases. So I'm just going to simply wire my pressure switch in with the common of my gas valve. So as my gas valve, if there's anything to be wrong with my, my vent motor, my flue pipe being clogged, my combustion chamber being clogged, broken, or what have you, that pressure switch would not be able to close. And if that pressure switch is not able to close, I cannot energize my gas valve. My gas valve will not deliver my gas to my burners and I will not ignite. Okay, so this is a little bit more than what you might actually think. But in a nutshell, it is still relatively simple in the sequence of operation. It's just a couple more wires that are going on. So really, your sequence of operation for this type of system is that you have to have a call for heat from one of your thermostats in one of your zones. Once that thermostat calls for heat, the zone valve is now going to open. Once the zone valve opens, it's going to now send that signal through the end switch up to your TT terminals on the aquastat. Once that aquastat receives that signal that one of those thermostats has now called for heat, it is now going to send that signal down to your burners and your ignition module, your inducer motor. All of that stuff is going to start to work. Your inducer motor is going to spin, and if everything is right with the flue pipe and your combustion chamber and all that, the pressure switch will close. Once that pressure switch closes, the gas valve and your pilot and all that stuff will ignite which will then heat the boiler and then at approximately about 160 degrees or so the aquastat will now sense that temperature of the water and then energize your circulator. And that is basically really how this whole thing operates. And in the event that the flame happens to roll out for whatever reason during the operation, that rollout switch will open and it will kill the ignition module, which will then in turn shut off your gas valve and all that stuff, and you won't have a call. And that's it.